What I really want is to just be able to go out there and feel it and just enjoy it. Because I've been working for this for the last three years. It's showtime! Hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast! Filmed in glorious Scrabble Vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay-per-view by pay-per-view. This is your host, your boy, bringing a drum of jambalaya, Jay Hunter, and casting some Louisiana voodoo. It's V1, sir. What's the story? And OSC can't be arse showing up today. <laughs> <laughs> and now that he's listening, he's really salty about it. So joining us as he does for modern WWE reviews, it's the monarch of Mardi Gras, the bard of Bourbon Street, the Peter Beardsley of podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> it's Matthew of Botchamania. Oh, thank you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is I, the Peter Beardsley, best enjoyed in audio form. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Brucey bonus review of WWE's flagship event, Wrestling's Super Bowl, WWE's All Ireland at Croker. It's episode 71, WrestleMania 34, and it's coming up right now. Get ready, fighters! Welcome, Noggers! <laughs> Happy, Happy days, days are here, here again! again. Big thanks to Christina Skiles for the Street Fighter Alpha 3 styled animated pixel art. How great was that? Oh my god. Go for broke? It was amazing, <laughs> by the way. And thanks to Grant Baines for the incredible painting, The Creation of Woman, featuring Stephanie McMahon and Ronda Rousey. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and thank you to Luke and Mookie for their help with facts and stats. Oh, actually, WWE had a press conference earlier this week, so I have some numbers for you. Hmm. WWE absolutely smashed YouTube subscribers' inboxes with over 200 videos WrestleMania week. Oh my god, prior to the price of the bike. FYI, YouTube comes under digital media, which makes WWE 34 and a half million a year, but it costs 24 and a half million a year to run it. Okay. But 10 million a year, that's like almost a third of their overall profit, so good stuff. 80% of WWE's YouTube audience is not from America, and that accounts for 30% of their revenue. Holy race to the finish line. Actually, WWE released this for free, but you can see it. The WrestleMania program, you haven't looked through it, and it's like, oh, Cena versus Taker. This match isn't definitely going to happen at the time of printing. And then Braun is like, oh yeah, Braun, he has a mystery opponent. We haven't sorted out yet. And then if you have a look at the US title match with Rusev, it's his face on WWE vacant body. Oh, yeah. Aveyance. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, Brian and Shane, that was a whole kerfuffle, uh, actually getting the match together. And if you look at the page where everyone else is, who was on the card is on it, and instead of the men's battle royal, there's just an Andre statue, and then they photoshopped out the Moolah statue, <laughs> so it's just empty. Oh my god. The Billy Mitchell battle royal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, whoa, with all of our hot dogging and gram standing out of the way, let's do it to it! Grammar that is. Talk about some cool stuff that happened Mania Weekend. Elias. He did an impromptu gig on Bourbon Street. Oh, Ooh. wow. Just going into clubs, start busking. Legend. I think it's a bit sad that a lead WWE talent has to be busking in his spare time. <laughs> He's also seen washing windows later on. <laughs> <laughs> Newly Hall of Fame's Bully Ray appeared at Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor 12. Andy heel turned on Cheeseburger. Nice. I have to say, uh, you know, I know his Hall of Fame induction is due to his tag career, but I have to recognise his incredible command of the crowd, both heel and face, working a crowd. Holy shit. Uh, wait, wait, I'm going to interrupt. I I've seen what Billy Ray looks like. That guy's never turned heel in a cheeseburger in his life. <laughs> <laughs> Over the top's session moth Martina gave an OSW fan at Niodox some of her beer and went back to give him beads. That's awesome. That's nice. And Matt Stryker announced her as being from Scotland. Oh my God. Are you fucking serious? Yes. And whilst, whilst looking at notes. <laughs> oh. 
Alberto Del Conto. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. No show TNA's big event at WrestleCon. <laughs> <laughs> Smellness. And immediately got shit canned. But wasn't he there earlier? He was. <laughs> he was interrupting other people's interviews. And is, he's coked out of his bin. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> he he just coked off his tits, Matthew. End of story. He will Fact. fight you. <laughs> Well, it's fairness, though, because if he does turn you into a fight, there's a 50-50 chance for him not showing up. So, yeah, sure, <laughs> Wonderful. Over the last month, tramp stamp height has been making kids cry, brah. This is going to get him over. Oh, and then Mania Weekend. Friday was the Hall of Fame. Mark Henry in the... Jibber, 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 Hall of Fame, 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 Fame. Jibber. Jibber. Uh, what did you think of Mark Henry's uh, speech? Incredible. He was funny. He was witty. He was emotional. It was one of the better Hall of Fame speeches that I can think of. Uh, just knocked Ever. it out of the park. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Wasn't his son in a salmon jacket? His son was rocking that salmon jacket. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it's a sp- suspicious all night. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk about more about the Hall of Fame a bit later on. We can work it into the Mania review. Matthew, NXT TakeOver on Saturday. It was all right. Uh, no, yeah. it was mint. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. It seems like repetitive to say, wow, this might be the best NXT takeover ever, but holy shit, really, honestly, no hyperbole, maybe the best NXT takeover ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what do you think of the ladder match? I'm one of these people that thinks ladder matches are way overdone because there's only so much you can do with them. So if you're going to do them, make like a Nicolas Cage film and just go all out with the ridiculousness. <laughs> and oh my God, did they ever... Six of the best talents in the company take years off their career by taking ridiculous stuff. Thank you, Velveteen Dream. Mm-hmm. Um, or EC3, who didn't mind leaving TNA to get to die several times during one match. Uh, yeah, loved it. It was crazy, and it just kept on going and going and going, and I loved it. Excellent. And the main event? This is gonna really going to suck when we talk about WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gargano versus Champa. You really remember these storylines and these real life, not real life, but you know, where it feels real and it worked so well. Like, yes, this guy, they were friends. Then he betrayed him. Nine months later, the blow off happens. Excellent. And Alistair Black? Alistair Black taking on Sien Almas. I saw this match when they did it at last year's WrestleMania, actually. And it That's wasn't right. that great. Yeah, th- it thank wasn't. you. Almas, who at the time wasn't over. He yep. wasn't great. He, he wasn't having good matches. Alistair Black was new. And his move or his character weren't over. So it was a dead match. Yeah, it was like a Glacier squash from 97. <laughs> <laughs> Sien Almas, uh, it, it's great seeing him be crap and then get a woman and suddenly he's motivated because that's a very realistic thing. And Alistair Black, a Satan worshipper, that's very realistic. <laughs> and yeah, what a match. All the counters were picture perfect. They all pressed an R1 at the right time. And yeah, loved it. The end with Vega hitting Almas after uh, getting involved in matches for her to be the person that was responsible for the finish. Perfect. Perfect storytelling. I love NXT. Yes, amazing night in NXT. Uh, incredible. And uh, well done, Triple H. Oh my God, did you see... There's a five-minute video, a supercut of Mauro Ronaldo marking out at NXT TakeOver. Oh, I haven't seen this. It sounds amazing, actually. They've isolated just his commentary and just goes, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> for five minutes. <laughs> there are no words. Oh, it was great. Don't tell me! Mamma mia! Mamma mia! Are you kidding me? And now... WWE Network presents WrestleMania Kickoff. So it's time for your Rocket League Snickers Kickoff pre-show. Only two sponsors. Uh, Two big ones. Where's my KFC honey barbecued Enzo chicken? (laughs) Yeah, where's the chicken fucker? (laughs) Yeah, the charges dropped. Come on. (laughs) Oh my God. John Cena legit sitting in the crowd in street clothes. That was awesome. He's waiting and hoping The Undertaker will take him up on his challenge. Sam Roberts is outside and shields the network. How much did these fans sell their soul for? Oh my god. 
Free, free, free. 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 Red free. is free. And Peter Rosenberg flexes his credibility, answering Renee's question, which was, how will fans react here if we get a Roman Reigns win tonight? And he answers with, they're going to react the same way as the people at home if they subscribe to the WWE Network. Oh, fucking you know what? No, too, you know what? No like, mercy. The game when you could select, you press right C on like Jim Ross, and you get Jerry Lawler. Yeah, yeah. he's the right C to Sam Roberts. <laughs> and think about what that means. <laughs> 30-man Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Woo! JR and King and Boo Byron are calling this matchup, featuring anyone who couldn't get into one of the other eight men's matchups tonight. Love the no entrances for anyone, or we'd be here all day. So let's get to it. Aiden English is out first, then Connor, then Hawkins. Funny that JR generally only talks about people he recognises from back in the day. So he's like, oh, Matt Hardy. Oh, Rhino. He's looking very <laughs> oh. big. <laughs> And Golden Truth, this is Ron Truth's big return. Was it? It was. Miss Your Rain and Miss Your Killings do their secret handshake. Gully Bully sees the spot and he's like, I I won't horn in on it. What a good boy. He is a great boy. Obviously enough, most of this is watching 20 plus men hug the ropes and periodically jump over the top. How is this schmoz booked, you ask? Note who goes out and busy work, busy work until your exit spot. Ryder's woo-woo face wash is interrupted by ex-tag mate Mojo. With his uh, giant spot on his peck. Like, I'm pretty sure the people in row Z are like, the size of that Mojo. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Him and Jinder are like, come on, lads. <laughs> Jinder? It's like Jinder's on a like an off cycle, so his body is smaller, but his nips have stayed the same size. <laughs> Oh, we get the highlight of the match, an ad break. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Everyone out of the pool. Benjamin, Rhino, Revival, Fandango. We hurtle towards the finish. Shattered dreams for perfect 10, but Ziggler dumps Goldust out. 10. Delete. 10. Delete. Nah, Ten. Matthew got the, like, the short stick of this. <laughs> he did. <Ten. laughs> Man, Hardy's got at least 10 teeth. More than anybody else in the match. <laughs> they do the fucking Hogan Warrior pose between. Wait for it. Wait for it. Kane and Baron Corbin. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Kane's 50. <laughs> Kane's wig has been in the business longer than Baron Corbin. <laughs> Kane dumps out Ziggler and then joins him. We're down to three Baron Von Baron, Mojo Raleigh, and Broken Matt Hardy. Bray Wyatt interrupts, assisting Matt to delete Mojo and dumps out Baron. Is it down to Bray and Matt? No, he wasn't in it. So the deletion anthem just plays and Matt Hardy wins it in 1545. Has Bray turned face after being tossed into the lake of reincarnation? Yes! They hug and team pose to see us out. I cannot believe what I'm seeing! Wow! The commentator says, Wow, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, it's very prestigious. <laughs> Two of the people who have won it in the previous years are in the exact same position they were <laughs> last time they won it. There's Baron Corbin, there's Mojo Rawley, there's Brockway, Ogdenville, North Haverbrook. <laughs> I sure put them on the map. Thank you, Jay. I'd hate myself if I didn't bring up Dov Ziggler. Shawn Michaels, in one hour into one match, once in his career, did this spot where he went over the ropes and held on, and one foot touched the floor, but it takes two to be out. An iconic spot. People will remember that in 20, 30 years' time. Dolph Ziggler, 60 seconds into your WrestleMania pre-show, Karamakbar Battle Royale. Curtain jerker. Proceeds to do it four more times during this match. He did it so many times that I think JR even gave him guff over it. Like, oh, come on. This guy is a fucking geek who doesn't <laughs> understand wrestling. He doesn't get it. And he's been wrestling for, what, 15 years? Both of his fans are going to get at you. He's a fucking <laughs> geek. Oh, you guys are merciless. And plus, but you're right, though, because Shawn Michaels did that spot with British Bulldog, who was yes. mainly, mainly going to win. Dolph Ziggler was doing this to Primo Colon. <laughs> Fandango. <laughs> oh, my God. Tonight... There is action on the way. (laughs) 
And the action's about to Next up is 205 Lives Tournament Final for the Cruiserweight Championship. It's Mustafa Ali versus Cedric Alexander. Matthew, spill the beans. Word beans. <laughs> How's 205 Live been since Enzo's gotten shit canned back in January? Well, ever since Chicken Fuck has left, it's been great. Um, <laughs> well, obviously, the negatives of 205 Live are stuff that's out of the wrestlers' hands, given the fact it's after SmackDown crowd always waiting for the dark match main event or mixed match challenge to come on and you know the style of wrestling in WWE nowadays is more cruiserweight than it's ever been it's not mm. like seeing Ray versus Juventus Guerrero on Thunder or Nitro when the rest of the cards Hugh Morris versus Duggan you know uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but now it's yeah they're very similar styles with a guy like Balor and Rollins and all this Rollins. so yeah. they have made it all tournament based now that's under they are focusing more on feuds now, like, uh, Lose Your House Party are uh, feuding with Tozawa and Hideo Itami. Brian Kendrick is back. So it's getting better. It just should be on at any other time, and it'd be so much better. But they're not, so eh. But they did a solid match. They did the best match they were going to have. And the fact that people on Twitter are immediately going, How woke is WWE? A black guy beat a cop! Uh, made it all worthwhile. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> is Mustafa Ali? Was uh... He's a cop. Is he an actual cop? He's a rosa. He's a pig. Is no. he an actual Bobby? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's actually he's a Bobby. <laughs> Ali is wearing a cross between Seth Rollins and Sub-Zero. It was cool. Lovely to hear Nigel McGuinness at Mania, former ROH champion and amazing wrestler and talker, current NXT commentator. I think the suspense is unbearable. I hope it never ends. It is time for the first of nine championship matches here at WrestleMania. Ooh, we got some lovely suplexes, dive to the outside, and a gorgeous running Spanish fly. Kayfabe smashing as Cedric almost falls from the turnbuckle and Ali stops him and holds him because he needs him for the next spot. <laughs> a top rope Spanish fly again. Damn it, Dilo. Jesus Christ, twice in one fucking match. Poor 205 Live. They just split screen the match with an ad for Ronda Rousey with audio. Which oh. they had already shown on the pre-show. <laughs> you. It was ridiculous. Amazing reverse runner, aka poisoned Frankensteiner on Cedric and follows up with a glorious DDT an 054 splash an incredible imploding 450 Finish of the match. Oh man Mickey Reagan level acting here <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck was that? Burn it <laughs> Hi. Oh. Stop This is enough Heart and Soul, then stop. This is enough. Holy shit. It lads. was awful. And we get a back elbow, lumbar check, and Cedric claims the cruiserweight title in 1220 as Cedric grabs Ali's head so he can thank him in the ring. And Cedric Alexander is the new cruiserweight champion. Austin Rocket, Mania 19. This was not, <laughs> by the way. When Sean and Rick did that at the end of the match at Mania 24. <laughs> that was earned by decades of two of the greatest wrestlers to have ever been seen. It pissed me off in this. I'm like, you guys haven't earned this. Now, you know, I was banking on these guys coming out and having as good a match as possible on the second match on a Mania pre-show given <laughs> seven or eight minutes. Um but Cedric came out and started doing fucking grounded waist locks for three minutes. This is your cruiserweight WrestleMania moment. Other than the running Spanish fly and the 054, which looks great. I thought this match was very meh. Expected a lot more. Yeah, uh, I think you're right there. Like they were handcuffed and no, not just because he's a copper. Um, by the time <laughs> they got Very and good. the pre-show, yeah, there was no way they could have like, you know, a 45 minute Ring of Honor main event because that's, th th no, <laughs> no. Please don't, don't actually yeah. do that. <laughs> you're right though. To them, it meant a lot. To the crowd, it didn't mean anything, which is a shame. I like Mustafa Ali. He tweeted at me once. Oh, what did he say? Stop putting me in your show, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he, he got knocked the fuck out legit at an AAW show. And I went, ooh, I did a gif of it because it was not pretty. And he went, yay, am I finally going to be in the video? I went, no, you got, you got sparked <laughs> out. He went, damn it. <laughs> Hilarious. Brilliant. Women's Battle Royal! And now the... Uh 
rest of the women's superstars. It's time for, is it time for your pre-show main event? It's time it for your pre-show main event. <laughs> the No One's Memorial Women's Battle Royal. <laughs> 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 so WWE had the balls to initially call this the fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal. Never mind Moolah sabotaging the careers of multiple female wrestlers like Wendy Richter, the jumping bomb angels. That's why they're not, they had to leave the WWF but honouring a woman who trafficked and prostituted untrained female wrestlers to promoters to give out to their wrestlers. Just stuck them on a bus and they found out halfway through. Worth noting, a handful of people, including her daughter, have disputed these horrific allegations. So yeah. We'll see where that goes. Anyway, after two days of pressuring WWE, someone informed Snickers, which is WrestleMania's main sponsor, and they told WWE, fucking get to it, mate, change that. So it was written, so it was done. The No One's Memorial Women's Battle Royal. Oh, do you like the trophy change, Steve? I think it's fucking hilarious. It's not quite the Champions League trophy. <laughs> it's not even the Champions League. <laughs> By the way, Jericho texted Vince during the debacle. He said you should name it after Sherry Martel, which is something I'd love, and call it the Sensational Invitational. That's incredible. And Vince replied, thanks. THX. <laughs> <sighs> Beth and Paige are guesting on commentary. Beth fuming over Hillbilly Jim, besting her for the never-ending speech award at the Hall of Fame. Oh, we get some entrances this time. The last one going to Sasha. Everyone gangs up on Carmella, out to the apron, kicked and pushed out. Ton of NXT women in there too, like Carrie Sane. They get a We Are NXT gloat spot. Horrendous blinding orange number by Kavita Devi. Um, so... <laughs> They were saying, did you know that this big tall lady is trained by the great Kali? And I was like, ooh, is she? And then she does her one spot. I was like, now I see it. <laughs> now you can tell she trained by the great Kali because she called a spot and she went, <laughs> <laughs> Bianca Belair from NXT almost shits herself standing on the top rope, but performs her 450 perfectly and fist pumps to celebrate. Like Mortal Kombat 3 Sindel, she whips Becky with her hair. Nice. Oh, man, it's loud. Oh, oh, did you? That was Bianca Belair's hair. V1, did you like Mickey's poofy gold breastplate dealy? I thought it looked awesome. Very, very cool. Oh, there's a female referee. Cool. NXT's Jessica Carr. Hmm. So we're down to six. The Riot Squad, which is Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan, and Natty, Bailey and Sasha. Natty gets dumped out and, oh shit, she split her kex right at her beaver. This poor girl, oh my god. The finish of the match, Liv Morgan's out next, followed by Ruby Riot. Then Sarah Logan jumps over the top rope to join her. So it's down to Sasha and Bailey. Bailey feigns a handshake and then hooshes Sasha out. Bailey wins! No! Swerve! Naomi was never eliminated and is back in. Flying bum tackle and dumps out Bailey, giving Naomi the win for some reason in 9 minutes 50. Uh, what do you think? A mixed bag, but overall I still thought it was better than the men's match. Once again, I thought poor Becky got shafted like she's been for the last year and a half. Uh, this company are giving her nothing to work with. Ah, she's in Marine 6. Oh close my god. Encounters, <laughs> close quarters. That's it. She's going to Hollywood. <laughs> She's going to home video <laughs> streaming. <laughs> She's going to torrent website. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, nothing much. Sad bananas, Bailey didn't get a much needed win. Crowd wants to like Bailey, they want to get behind Bailey, and they, she's not getting a bean. Mm -hmm. um, I wish Sasha and Bailey got had a singles match instead. It went over much better. Yeah. Uh, like, not everyone needs to be on the card. Like, there was 20 women here, and you can remember four of them, maybe. They should just follow up on the awesome Elimination Chamber spot where Sasha does the Mufasa death scene drop. Oh. Yes. Brother, help me. Long live the king. Ah! Snickers presents the greatest live event in entertainment, Wrestlemania. It 
It's WrestleMania 34, April 8th, 2018, from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana. Announced attendance is 78,133. Police records and turnstile counts indicate it's about 20,000 less. Wow. <laughs> With a whopping 2.1 million network subscribers, 316,000 trying the network for free. Up 9% or 150k on Mania last year. Raw commentary is Michael Cole, Corey Graves and my boy, Coach. Terrible performance, sir. And <laughs> on the blue side is Tom Phillips, BS, Byron Saxon and Corey Graves again, pulling double duty. Double duty. Awesome. Does he get paid double for working both brands? Gets paid like half. <laughs> <laughs> Our inaugural contest is for the Intercontinental Championship. It's Finn Balor versus champion The Miz versus Seth Rollins. Seth Night King Rollins comes out first. That was very cool. Uh, odd to have a winter theme for a guy whose whole gimmick is burn it down. Yeah, yeah. And that has no effect on White Walkers. Oh, that's oh. right. Just glass them, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, <I was> say. <laughs> Smash a pint in their face. Bit of Newcastle brown, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a Newcastle brown ale. Stitch that Jimmy, yeah. <laughs> Chewing a brick, are you? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Then The Miz. Oh, I love him. Uh, do you remember when they were in Cleveland a couple of weeks ago and they were like, welcome home, Miz. And he says, I live in LA. Oh, oh boom. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Wade Barrett did that when he came over here. Oh, yeah. Dressing in Newcastle. And we're like, yay, England, England, England. Gets on the mic. I'm from the Northwest. Screw Newcastle. <laughs> boom. We hate you, Wade <laughs> Barrett. You sweaty <laughs> Preston fucker. Boom. Oh. Awesome. Then Finn Balor comes out. Finn Balor, joined by all the men, he's turned gay. <laughs> <laughs> kick off hot. Means kick to the face. Uh, Steve, can you count one, two? One, two. Swing! <laughs> I hate that gimmick. Yeah, I know. I fucking hate it. Yeah. Then we see Cena. It's like, oh, we're going to check in with him during every bout until he has his moment. Hilariously, he's nursing his beer. He looks to have taken about three sips out of it over the last hour. Double buff blockbuster by Seth. Ooh, and then a Tanahashi love letter. Dragon rocket suicide dive. And another. Sling blade. And another. Dragon screw. A high fly flow frog splash. A dragon sleeper? No, no, it's a 1916. Denied, but Balor hits an overhead kick and gets his 1916. Rollins stops a superplex to buckle bomb Miz. It's really safe, thank you. And superplexes Finn, but keeps rolling, but it's countered. Miz sneaks in with a skull crushing finale, but he can't get the win. Bauer, Miz, both in trouble. Oh, oh, Miz, wait. though. Was Miz playing? Oh! 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 A bulldog from the top rope. Super loose bulldog by Miz to Rollins, but Finn breaks it up with a coup de gras. Devitt starts cooking and hits another on Miz, but Seth curb stomps Baller's head into Miz and then just another two Miz for good measure. Seth gets a clean as a whistle victory and the IC title in 1527. Seth! Super opener. Pretty much the perfect way to open up a massive show. Seth, he looked unbelievable here. And he was booked to look like a world champion here. And there was one spot that I absolutely loved. I thought the camera work was incredible. I think it was when Miz had Finn in the figure four. And the camera is like lying down low. And then out of nowhere, Seth just comes out with the splash. And looked fucking amazing yeah that looked great absolutely so two big dirty thumbs up here yeah it was fun loved it it was the intro of the wrestlemania that it needed i agree with everything v1 said the camera work was very good for a change because it was friggin' awful during the andre the giant battle royal and um, so i'm glad that they picked it up but it wasn't looking at cena who clearly isn't a real fan <laughs> he's not on twitter while he watches wrestling and yeah miz is my favorite bit about this feud not thrilled with Rollins winning because it means the Miz feud's over, I guess, and they can do Balor versus Rollins and everyone can go, ah, I miss the Miz. But that, that's another story for another day. Yes, agrees. I thought a pleasant, high work rate, fast-paced opener with Finn and Seth. It's an intense CrossFit cardio affair. 
I'm just wondering, because they go really fast. I'm wondering, how fast can you go if you're in the Tokyo Dome? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing much, but happy all three were on the card and not in the Battle Royal. So thumbs up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Also, Jay, I like that the fact we were calling that match just then and you talk about all the moves like, oh, the O to Tanahashi, the O to Ric Flair with the figure four. And then also it's like, also O to Buff Bagwell. <laughs> Bow down to the queen. Asuka bowed to no one. Next up is the SmackDown Women's Championship. It's Charlotte versus Asuka. Title versus streak. Question. Who is the best WrestleMania sign pointer in WWE? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Asuka at Fastlane. Choosing her WrestleMania opponent because she won the Women's Rumble. Like she came out to Charlotte and she was kind of hulking up and stuff like that. And she's so happy. And then we go, ah, oh, the point. Uh, hey. I thought it was amazing. I think about... 70% of the feuds on WrestleMania were built around pointing at the sign. Are you allowed to point at a WrestleMania sign if you're not booked to have a match? Ooh. Like, can Primo Cologne point at the sign? <laughs> no, if you're Primo Cologne, you point at the concession stand. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to Randy Orton saying, a lot of sign pointing going on. Oh, Everyone's there. pointing at the sign. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sign Season pointing sign going pointing. on. Yeah. Bow to the Queen, but Asuka bows to no one. Charlotte is the queen, but Asuka is the empress. Wow, Charlotte, a super fancy entrance set to actually also Zach Zarathustra. Oh, so fantastic. It was Got amazing. Go goosebumps. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. Call back to her dad's Starcade 83 entrance, which is nowhere near as nice as this one. Oh, sure it was. Golden Mist with Centurion Guards. Perhaps a callback to Jim Hurd's Spartacus gimmick. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> but did she have the diamond earring? That's that's <laughs> what would have made it. That's what gets you over. Oh, I'm, all right, that's it. That, that's what I'm going to beat in the rest of the review, though. Ooh, what does Asuka get? CG AOR graphics. Yes, I too love reboot. <laughs> Damn it, I was going to say that. But what about the reboot of reboot? Oh no, have you seen that shit? No. I have. Oh. <laughs> how, how is it looking? Do you like your childhood? Not really, no. I was going to say, oh, oh, well then you can <laughs> look at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was pretty miserable. Uh, pretty, <laughs> if you've been talking. I managed no, to cut my Cocoa Pops <laughs> with Rice Krispies. <laughs> and the, I can tell. <laughs> Who are you fooling? <laughs> Just ruining two circles. <laughs> and the childhood. Yes. Uh, by the way, I do have a what bar for Charlotte. Okay. Steve, what bar is Charlotte? Well, Jay, Charlotte is wearing an all gold WrestleMania getup. So she is a galaxy golden egg. Oh, yes. They're fucking delicious, by and the way. And tie in with the ovaries in that. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, here we go. The question on everybody's mind is about to be answered. Who will reign supreme, the queen or the empress? Back and forth to kick off. Flying bum tackle denied, but countered into a victory roll. Oh, I love the measured nonchalant kick to the head, back of the head, that Asuka does. Is that Senshi's kick where yes. he like, lifts the leg and grabs it and then boop? Oh, it's measured. Oh, so good. And... Getting that bum tackle. Thumbs up. Asuka Yoda's Charlotte. Like she jumps on her, her back. Ah. This is why you fail. <laughs> <laughs> but counters with a backpack stunner. Charlotte does a lovely arc moonsault into Asuka's awaiting open legs. Brrr. Into a hell's gate. Powers out and applies a Boston crab. Suplex from the apron to the outside by Asuka. Ouch, by the way. Thank God they only do mania once a year. Asuka, no. Oh, oh no! Follows up with a top rope dropkick. Bow and arrow stomp to the back. Looks awesome. But Charlotte returns with a John Morrison Spanish fly. Damn it, Dilo. That was really impressive looking. Okay, either it was different bookers for 205 Live and this match, or eh, no one's watching the pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> 
Finish of the match. Finally, Charlotte locks in the figure four and bridges into the figure eight. Incredible by the queen. The queen pulling her on the stage. Oh, my God. Oscar oh, taps. The streak of Oscar is over. Here. And Oscar taps. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. I marked out really hard that it's like I oh, enjoyed this match so much. Competitive 50 50 booking. Both looked very strong, tearing lumps out of each other and breaking out big moves to try to secure the win. Like, I view Asuka as top of the food chain in the women's division, so Charlotte winning was unexpected and a bigger gain for her. Asuka gives a sporting congratulations to the winner and the two hug. I believe it was a congratulation. Oh, that was a racist noise that I will cut out. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Ghostbusters on NES. Ah, nice, yes. nice. Uh, Muff, what did you think, sir? Oh, yeah, it was great. Uh, it felt like it was a big friggin' deal. Who can take on the streak? Well, Charlotte. Like, fucking Lord of the Rings. Ooh. No woman can slay me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am no woman. I'm an empress with hexadecimal masks during the intro. So, yeah, felt like a big deal. Worked really well. I enjoyed the match. Surprised... The streak ended, but I wasn't unhappy because Asuka's great. She's a fantastic character. Love those things. She's a huge nerd that apparently owns every 64DD game, which wow. I feel like sharing because it's like, whoa, you're, you're not a casual nerd at all. Holy that's, that's, shit. That's, holy shit, yeah. nerd. That's intense shit. Yeah, she used to work for Nintendo and Xbox. Nice. Magazine, yeah, yeah. She was a freelance writer and I think she did some coding as well. Oh, as if this woman couldn't be any better. Like, you I was going to say Eddie Hodder. Like, oh holy shit. <laughs> By the way, I love Asuka. I, um, she is my favourite wrestler, and this was my WrestleMania main event. I was very sad wow. that this went on second. Maybe this could be like third from the top, but maybe it worked out better because the crowd were red hot. They came out of the traps. Holy shit, they were so fast. They were so good. It's the best women's match in WWE in years. The two of them were absolutely awesome, and I fucking loved it. Yeah. Cool. Then we get a shot of John Cena. Uh-huh. Then a fan jumps the barricade and runs up the <laughs> ramp backstage. <laughs> Could they not have waited 20 more seconds? No. Uh, just to see him sprint by fucking Charlotte, who's just won the biggest match of her career. Maybe the biggest match in women's wrestling history in WWE. This is the tightest seven hours, ten minutes on <laughs> <laughs> Next up is a fatal four-way match for the US title. Matthew, do you need to go to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Roo. Oh, sorry. It's uh... Bobby Roode. <laughs> Excellent. Versus Alexander Rusev. Versus Jinder Mahal. Versus Randy Orton. I have a what smokes. Oh, wow. For Jinder and Sunil. Who oh is, my God. Who is my boy, by the way? I think he's awesome. But not Samir. No, he's a jobber. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what smokes is Jinder Mahal and also Sunil? Well, Jay, Sunil Singh is wearing white with blue. So he is a pack of Rotmans. Oh my God. And Jinder is wearing blue with white. So he's a pack of Rothman's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. I like how they're together. Absolutely. Together. Ladies and gentlemen, today WrestleMania is... Rusev! Rusev's Harold Aiden, looking much like Das Funderkind when he was Berlin. Did he shave his head between the Battle Royal and coming <laughs> out here? Maybe. He did. Awesome. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have stopped for that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and Randy Orton, no giant wriggling sperm this year. <laughs> Rusev Day! Despite being crazy over with the fans, WWE stuck Rusev in the Battle Royal. He asked to be released. As recompense, they stuck him in this triple threat match to make it a four-way. He, he said, oh, here's a tweet. Oh, this is all I could do for build up to this match. And it was a shot of Stephanie and 
Hunter at the Hall of Fame and Rusev's in the background photo bombing. <laughs> it's great. And that's his build. <laughs> You're welcome. Rusev bowls over Mahal and Orton. Jinder tries to form an alliance with Rusev, eats a lovely scoop, then clockwise slam. And everyone marvel at Rusev's amazing shape. Yeah, dude is in great shape. He's, he's a beast. Or KO party to Aiden, to Rusev, to Mahal. But Bobby saves it. Rusev Machka, which is a kick. Rusev Putrea, which I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hire Rusev now. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd erupt into Rusev Day chants. <laughs> Distraction from V1's boy, Sunil. Oh my god. Kalos. Penetration, fold up, rolled up. Rusev takes the fall and Jinder is sort of unhindered, getting the US title in 8-14. Stephen, did this match live down to expectation? <laughs> God damn, Jay. I was like, holy shit, they have a death match on the third match on the card. And uh, as over as Rusev is, it doesn't matter. This match was never going to do anything and it felt like a match you'd see every Tuesday night or at like first lane. Uh, Yeah, I didn't care. Yeah, literally everybody was at the party that was watching this left for a tab. Oh, wow. They did justify it somewhat by getting rid of the oh my God, are you fucking serious storyline feud based on the top 10 video they did that one time. And they also would have made it better if, you know, Bruce had won. You'd be like, all right, whatever, the match sucked, but yay. And instead, Jinder won. And I have nothing interesting to say about this match. Was it exactly what it deserves? So I'm going to do a crap joke instead. Did you hear Jinder Mahal fell asleep in a library? And when he woke up, a blind man was trying to read his back. <laughs> <laughs> That's also gross. Very good, very good. Uh, so this is a SmackDown matchup. On SmackDown afterwards, they have a triple threat match between the losers to face Jinder Mahal. Randy wins. And so he's lumped with Jinder at Backlash. <laughs> Backlash. That's what Jinder's got. <laughs> It's a mixed tag match. It's Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon and Ribbleach. Ribbleach. The build Ronda Rousey. She debuted at the Rumble, spent most of it pointing. (laughs) There was a big signing and Angle botched it for Triple H and Stephanie. It was very funny. Angle was like, hey, Triple H, didn't you say, ha, now we got the bitch? It was like, oh, it was (laughs) very funny. You said three years in the making and now we own the bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got that amazing picture of Triple H sucker punching Angle. And yes. Angle's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then we got some incredible MMA sit down interviews. Obviously, they couldn't slash didn't get The Rock. And oddly, Batista asked, hey, do you want me in it? And they actually didn't call him back on That's it. That's kind of mental, isn't it? Considering how big fucking Drax is. Yeah. Marvel superstar. Like. Yeah, yeah. But Ronda Rousey has gotten a lot of legitimacy tagging with Kurt Angle, the Olympic gold medalist. Stephanie perfectly uses her real-life corporate shill persona to parlay it into this fantastic smarmy heel. Legit. On an article, WrestleMania week, she was called a globetrotting executive and tireless philanthropist. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's heel heat right there. like. And you can ask Triple H, why is this match happening? And he responds, because Kurt's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I don't know what got into Kurt Angle. Because Kurt Angle's an idiot. That's why we're here. Because Kurt Angle is an idiot. Rhonda initially... Awful promo-wise, but they've been booking her really, really well. And she has a mean kind of grr face. Yeah. You know? Like, Ronda will never go out there and be able to cut a 25-minute Raw promo. WWE promo. Absolutely not. She It's just not what she does. But she can get me more into a match saying one or two words than most wrestlers can saying 10,000 words. Her announcement that she wanted to fight Stephanie and Triple H at Mania, they actually made her redo it and post because yeah. way better in the promo. 
This gets better and better. Here we are. Yeah, here we go. Here's a drum roll. You. The person I want to choose for my WrestleMania match is you. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's very good, though. Drew Bleach and Stephanie are on massive tricycles. They were amazing. I loved it. Same as last year, but with more women. Yes, last year they took Goldberg's cops, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were like, fuck you, Goldberg, we're more important. It's a cycle for every H. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> H pecks dance to Angle's theme song. He's like, me, 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 me. <laughs> he's in great shape like he is uh, like Hunter looks like he did 17 years ago he looks fucking great Man, he's in he, whopper shape he is built like Kratos yes that of war yeah. <laughs> Kurt's wearing a much less ridiculous star spangled singlet do you see the promotional posters they had he had this horrific A attire it was oh, yeah. oh my god did you like his Michael Jackson one glove though oh his wanking cloth <laughs> <laughs> It was amazing. Rhonda's in a cute piperized getup, including a rowdy sports top, short skirt kilts, and WWE makeup, which is much better than a couple of weeks ago. And when she's going around with the red cat with eyes. With the fucking pink eye. It's like, <laughs> it's like, Rhonda, wash your hands after wiping your arse, yeah? <laughs> Lovely, smarmy, corporate prat Stephanie. She just pie faces Rhonda. And then she fucking legs it. It was amazing. And then she runs back over when Rhonda turns her back, pulls her hair, and pulls her down to the thing, and legs it back again, and grabs the rope. It's so rope. good. What a heel. She's fucking amazing. She really is her father's daughter. Yes. Sneaky chicken shit heel. Amazing. Steph further goads Rhonda by slamming Angle's head into the steps, as well as cancelling a tank spot by pulling Rhonda off the apron. Thumbs up. Yeah. You talk too much. He, he never, never shuts, shuts up. up. Uh, man, that's great. We actually have Matthew on the show. It's, yeah. it's so cool. <laughs> oh, bless you, Jay. H is bellowing out spots to Kurt Angle. He just hollers, Spine Buster! And Angle takes one. With Triple H out, Kurt slowly reaches and gets the hot tag. The crowd flip their shit. They go mental. We get to see what everyone got WrestleMania for. How Ronda would do in a WWE match. Hair pull in, clothesline and commando roll. Try some more complicated spots like a back body drop twisting into a slam. And socks Stephanie in the baby maker. Oof. Oh my god, that body punch was yeah. great. It was like, on her first night in, she may have the best punches in WWE. I have it on good authority. Michael Cole says that The Undertaker oh. is the greatest striker in the WWE. Where does Shane O'Mac <laughs> Man, I thought this entire segment's just magic, but stop adjusting your outfit. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure Trish is just having a fucking stroke back home watching this. <laughs> Much like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Steve! <laughs> Jocks watch. Jock's Watch Jay is back. Holy shit. So, Rhonda adjusted her gear three times between taking off her jacket and the bell ringing. A further two times before getting into the ring. And then, when she got into the ring, 13 more times she adjusted either her top or her jocks for a grand total of 18 times, which I believe is more than any Bubba Ray match that we've watched. Congratulations, Ronda. <laughs> yeah. A winner is you, Ronda. Ronda tries an armbar, and hilariously, Steph is booked to block and escape a Ronda Rezzy armbar. Yeah, as Barry Ladd pointed out on Twitter, hey, Stephanie McMahon with a better ground game than any opponent Ronda Rousey has ever fought in UFC. <laughs> oh my God. That was all right. It was a thumb to the eye. So there you go. Sneaky heel. I, I was actually rooting for Steph out of morbid enjoyment. Oh, uh, my yeah. God. Ronda Rousey with Stephanie on her shoulders. Oh, oh Stephanie. H breaks up the pin and Ronda wants to go against Triple H. Did you hear the fans? And Ronda Rousey 
is in the ring. Oh my God. That may be the hottest feud in wrestling if they do this. Yes. It was so great. He was so cocky. I am literally double her fucking weight. I will smash this. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. What am I doing? What am I doing? It was brilliant. I adored it. And the crowd explode when Ronda goes for a Samoan drop. No, she's not. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're going to be me. Steph brings Ronda to the outside. And who do we see? Sweet zombie Linda. Right <laughs> Playing a stormer. Oh, there. Oh. Angle goes through his repertoire. What does he do? A couple of belly to bellies, a couple of bimmy to jimmies, which look very rough. And Hunter, he jumps. Oh my God. Kurt Angle not looking great. Outside of punches, he is limited. Yeah. There's a bit where Angle dumps Triple H on the outside and he can barely get up and yeah. Triple H just jumps outside. It's, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. And even worse, the crowd was chanting, you still got it. Oh. I'm like, you, you are not helping. No. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie Linda. <laughs> Angle eats a pedigree, but Ronda breaks it up. So we get round two of Triple H and Rousey. H takes the armbar, and then Steph. As Angle slaps on the ankle lock, we get a lovely husband and wife in peril spot. H cleverly rolls out of the ankle lock, which bumbles Angle into Ronda. Time for the finish. H gets dumped out, and Ronda passes Steph's guard quite easily. Oh shit, Steph's in big trouble. All tied up, Ronda motions to break Stephanie's arm, and smacks the mat and goes out of view as she pulls back. It sounded holy shit. Very clever. And Stephanie taps. And then we got a shot of Dana White clapping and the baby faces are victorious in 20 minutes 40. Incredible. The best non-wrestler match in WrestleMania history. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mixed tag match. Celebrity comes in. First matches at Mania. That goes to Snooki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. So, uh, you, you, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. without question, you know, uh, Lawrence Taylor, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, in at the drop here. Oh, my God. Money Mayweather at WrestleMania. I love that, man. 24, this blew them all out of the water. Honestly, it blows most matches out of the water, other than your absolute top tier wrestling matches. Loved every second of it. I loved the build. Every person played their part. Stephanie is a heat magnet. She was incredible. And she gave Ronda so fucking much. Ronda, oh my God, it's your first time having a match. You are a megastar. I loved the tease of the action between Ronda and Hunter. And then I loved them doing their spot. It was the bit where Ronda grabbed his arm and did a roll through and got uh, Hunter on her shoulders. Um, absolutely incredible. I loved the end. And I loved the fact that once the arm bar was in, tapped immediately, put the move over. Incredible. Absolutely loved it. Match of the night for me by a mile. Yeah. This was a crap but great match. And I mean that in a nice way because it's all about the characters getting the crowd reaction rather than, you know, another Spanish fly off the top that kicks out the two. And God, the crowd ate it up with a giant UFC flavored spoon. Loved this match so much. Everybody in the, the room that was watching it was going, yeah, Ronda. So yeah, Stephanie Mann, queen of the crap but good matches. And Triple H is now playing the role of Triple H that we wanted when he was wrestling the likes of Booker T, where he's just. Like, oh yeah, you think you're good, do you? And then just sells his ass off, and it's so fantastic. So yeah, 10 out of 10, yeah, probably the best match of the night. Could have headlined. Yeah, should have. Agreed. Although I'm wondering, like, if you go on too late, people, they'll turn very easily on it. Everyone was really fresh, because this is the first main event of the night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, There's no main events. So I thought it was perfect placement. Couldn't have gone any better. Thoroughly enjoyable, intricately laid out match where the combatants go from big spot to big spot. As Matthew was saying there, I, I think that's what Brett bangs on about when he says Triple H is a 4 out of 10 wrestler, because it's all storyline drama, but the technical in-ring aspect of it is no good. Mm. But... 
in-ring drama is what wrestling is all about. And everyone marked out big time. Yeah. So shut your face, mate. Yeah. Yeah, kind <laughs> I of. I still love you, though. Yeah. <laughs> Triple Threat Tag Team Match for the SmackDown Tag Championship. It's the New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston versus the Usos, who are the champions, versus the Bludgeon Brothers. I just made me think, TMZ tweeted out a picture of uh, Xavier and said, oh, there's Kofi. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm the other black guy. Um, New Day's PS2 AOR graphics. Fan? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, shout out to Xavier using the Green Ranger's Dragon Zord call on his trombone. I did love that. Beep, 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 beep. On the grandest thing to the ball. Yeah, but he didn't do it right because instead of a fucking Dragon Zord, we got Pancake Men. <laughs> <laughs> what is the storyline to this match, Math? Do you have anything? Well, the Bludger Brothers beat the shite out of the New Day and the Usos and kept on doing it. And so this is finally like, well, Bludgeon Brothers are finally getting their tag title shot and they beat the shite out of everybody. <laughs> that, that's a story. Yes. And Uso's finally getting on to Mania. Yes, first WrestleMania match despite debuting in June 2009. Wow, so yet yeah, nine fucking Manias that Congratulations, they've Congratulations, Uso's. Mania 27 pre-show Battle Royal, which Great Kali won. Many 28 pre-show took the fall where the Colognes retained their tag belts. Oh my god, that was a thing. Many 29, just not on the card. Many 30 pre-show retained against Los Matadores, aka the Colognes, the Real Americans and Roy Baxel. Roy Baxel. Jesus. Many 31 pre-show took the fall. Cesaro and Kid won and Jay would injure his shoulder, taking him out for six months. Mania 32 pre-show jobbed to the Dudley boys. Mania 33 pre-show Andre the Giant Battle Royal that Pray for Mojo won. <laughs> so now Mania 34, the Usos come out slightly later in the night, finally get their pay-per-view WrestleMania match. And what a match it was! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Harper and Rowan type in IDDQD. God mode in Doom. Oh, nice. well done, Jay. Crash, smash, bash, and Xavier gets stank eyes. <laughs> Wallop. <laughs> <laughs> what a video. <laughs> <laughs> and takes the fight to them. Steve, Xavier getting in the match, DQ? No, because it's triple threat. Kaboom. The, the rules. rules. <laughs> They're upheld. The finish of the match, world's shittest boss man slam from Harper to Kofi. Tease a big human pyramid of doom and we're denied. Headbutt to the chest of Kofi, powerbomb by Ron, and assisted Brett's rope super powerbomb by Harper. Heels dominate and win the tag titles in 556. The bludgeon bras leaving as the new SmackDown tag champions. Eh? Eh? Very eh. Uh, I don't have much to say. Piss match number two. They fucking raced through this. They were like, oh fuck, we were given five or six minutes. We need to do everything. And that includes three heat spots and three comebacks <laughs> <laughs> in six minutes. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, lads. Uh, it was ridiculous. Um, It served its purpose, or so give it that much, which, yeah, Buzzard Brothers needed that win. If they hadn't, it would have been a waste of four months. So, good for them. Like the characters, I think emphasising the fact they've got big hammers and they can't possibly use them and never do is a bit silly. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, these guys have huge comedy mallets. Can they still do the thing that uh, Hunter does and just put their hand over the top and whoop, <laughs> straight into the belly well? Jab them. <laughs> Jab with, them, yeah. With yeah. a hammer. They get ready for Wagga Day. <laughs> <laughs> Needs more Timmy mallet. Next up, it's John Cena versus The Undertaker. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the build to this match? Um, yeah, the hype was so weird because Cena coming out and going, well, 
don't take anybody else's spot. <laughs> to wrestle Undertaker. You're like, well, <laughs> motherfucker, what? To have Undertaker not show up, as people have pointed out, well, maybe he just doesn't watch Raw if you try ringing him. Yeah, bizarre. Never seen any other feud where they've gone, I hope you show up, or we're going to have to offer refunds. Yeah, it's so weird because you think, okay, so they're going to announce it a month out, then three weeks out, two weeks out. Oh, wow, they're leaving it to the go home Raw to announce the match. And he never appears and they don't. Yeah, and like all the posters have been printed and shipped out to yep. New Orleans. Oh, holy, that was very odd. One thing I thought was also another synonym for odd was <laughs> John Cena used the fans on the Undertaker. Like it's tremendously manipulative his promo saying yeah. you should show up for the fans. Oh, answer me and show up, but for the fans' sake, mm. not for me. That's ugly and manipulative. Yeah. <laughs> The green and blue monster is back. And so is the comrade. <laughs> oh, God. People stop being in the streets. People who've never seen an episode of Botchamania and go, Hey, Mafu, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. Yes, the infamous comrade, not with a picture of Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> I'm a, exactly. I'm not written. sure which, me- which message is being sent with that, but I'll leave that be. <laughs> God damn it. She didn't think that one through. <laughs> <laughs> Strap yourselves in. It's Hinyan Cena now in his ring gear. The match bell rings and nothing. Oh Cena just gets pissed and leaves, but the lights go out. <laughs> Ooh, there's a chance for mega heat here, and Elias takes it. Yes. <laughs> He plays the House of the Rising Sun. I enjoyed that. He butchered the House of the Rising (laughs) Sun. (laughs) It's hilarious because he just says, were you expecting someone else? And then the crowd truthfully answer, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love this guy. He's so great. He gets some of the best heat in WWE. He doesn't have to bump. He doesn't have to hurt himself. He doesn't have to blade. He doesn't have to even train. He just has to come out and badly play the guitar. Genius. Steve, what bar is Nyan Cena? Well, Jay, John Cena. Who? Well, Jay. <laughs> Don't they call you Nay? No, I was going Nyan Cena. <laughs> oh, Nyan Cena. Well, Jay, John Cena Who? is wearing. <laughs> Nyan Cena Thank is you, wearing Steve. his gorgeous <laughs> green and purple gear. So he is. A watermelon Laffy Taffy. Yes, he is. So I was just going to uh, shout out to Byron for sending me that. I I, I thought it was perfect. Saxton. Perfect. Saxton. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice of him. Beat up Elias and then Cena's theme plays. Uh, well, shit, that's that then, isn't it? A truly blue balls WrestleMania moment. <laughs> what the fuck? The lights go out. The lights go back up in the ring. And Taker's gear is there next to a pyro machine. And <laughs> hilarious lighting sound number six dot wav plays. <laughs> and a bong. <laughs> RVD shows up. <laughs> Fucker. Nah, it's the Undertaker. The dead man is here. We're getting the match. I have to say, I really enjoyed this whole Taker rebirth by lightning shtick. Straight out of Friday the 13th, part six. (laughs) Yes, God, you're right. (laughs) Where Jason's corpse is struck by lightning twice and it revives him. Nice. It's ridiculous. Just like real life. (laughs) Ding, ding, ding. Michael Cole with one of the biggest whoppers of his career. These are the two greatest performers in WWE history. Get the fuck out of here, Michael Cole, you moron. Undertaker is the best pure striker ever in WWE. He says 20 minutes after Ronda Rousey <laughs> performed. But an hour before Brock Lesnar. Oh, but that's only because WWE have never hired Emil Heskey. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. God damn, I was gonna say but it being at WrestleMania 15, but never mind. <laughs> Taker goes old school. Snake eyes. Shit. Big boot. <laughs> All the classics. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, John Cena. What happened there, mate? 
Proto Bomb, you can't see me, but the Mike Myers sit up knocks a shocked Cena over. That was an amazing spot. That was it. Sit up! Oh! Cena stopped at his tracks! Finish of the match. The finish of the match? Tombstone. One, two, three. Fuck me. That's it. Taker goes 24 and 2 in just 2 minutes 38. What do you think? Take it away, Matthew. I'm a nice guy. I'm a hell of a guy. <laughs> and tonight we all know you. Sorry. <laughs> you fucker. Jay, you're killing me today. Jesus. Um, yeah, what a weird way to build this. You may see Undertaker. Card subject to change because <laughs> you might show up. I never want to see a competitive Undertaker match ever again after seeing him versus Reigns versus his own hip. Uh, no, it was a horrible triple threat main event match. Yeah, so weirdly effective, but also just a bit weird, like, all right, is this going to go anywhere? And the answer is yes, it's going to a foreign country. <laughs> and so, yeah, work for what it was, which, you know, God damn, if there's been a competitive Undertaker match on this show, the first seven and a half hour of friggin' WrestleMania, yeah, I'm glad it was quick, and glad it was effective, and glad I got the way, and that was it. Absolutely. Would you have preferred to have seen Biker Taker? I would flip out. It would be so incredible. I was hoping the lights would go out. I'll hear it. Rubble, 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 rubble. rubble, rubble. <laughs> and then, you won't remember <laughs> me. <laughs> you me. Oh my God, no. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, it's like nine matches down. Halfway through the show. <laughs> Jesus. I was clean shaven at the start of this. I got a fucking beard now. <laughs> Uh, it's time for the ad break questionnaire. Hi, the name is McMuscles, Matt McMuscles, and I come before the OSW multiverse with a question. Probably the greatest. That's uh, not for you. It's more of an Attitude Era podcast question. Now wait just a minute. We have twice the amount of Attitude as the Attitude Era podcast. Just ask us the question and we'll answer it. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll ask the question. I give you the ad break questionarium. <gasps> I've asked questions on Super Eye Patch Wolf, Wizard and the Bruiser, and Talking Simpsons, and by gum it put them on the map. Why there's nothing on Earth like a bona fide rambling six part questionarium. What I say? Questionarium. What's it called? Questionarium. 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 Now I hear that V1 is awfully loud. He sings as softly as a cloud. Jay Hunter will be mad. We're going long. Well, wearing waistcoats is weird and wrong. Is there a chance OC could appear? Well, not as long as British Matthew is here. British Matthew, fuck off. Whoa, okay. Hey, thank you to Lord Matthew Ashire for helping out with that little bit. You're a great sport. As for now, we got to get on with the ad break questionnaire. So, the question today is, who, despite paying full price for tickets, missed the entire pre-show and the Intercontinental Ladder match for WrestleMania 32? Answer after the break. The Toyota Bandera has the go-anywhere toughness and ability of Land Cruiser with the freedom of the wind in your hair. Toyota Bandera, you can't beat. A lot of feeling. Unbeatable freedom. Toyota. Right, okay, you're back. Um, so, who, despite paying full price, missed out on the entire pre-show and the Intercontinental Ladder match at WrestleMania 32? The answer is 40 to 60% of the live audience. Yes, for those that don't remember, WrestleMania 32 was held at the AT&T Arena, which is a huge multinational like communications conglomerate, and of course their internet went down before the show. So all their electronic card readers would not work, resulting in an empty arena for the first like hour and a half of WrestleMania 32. Fuck you, Texas. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you actually really did, you can enjoy lots more of my cheap YouTube comedy down at the Matt McMuscles Flophouse. Back to you, racist Irishman.
The Hall of Famers get 10 seconds each to wave. Wave to the people. <laughs> Blow kisses, kisses to the people. <laughs> Including J E double F J A double R E double T, Jeff Jarrett. Yes. Holy shit. Our fucking boy. Oh my God. They forgot to tell him it was a rib. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that uh, Teen A is not a thing? Because if you listen to his Hall of Fame speech... Oh my God. How could he not mention Teen A? He barely spent 15 years there. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable to see him in WWE. Yeah. yeah. Like Vince McMahon singled him out saying, all the Jeff Jarrett's of the world, double G, double O, double N, double E. Oh, Goonie. <laughs> Goonie, I'm not hiring you in 2001. And he's been pretty much whitewashed. I was just thinking, like, he should have held up the Hall of Fame for a quarter million just for, oh. <laughs> for all time's sake. <laughs> I, I was happy seeing Jeff Jarrett back in. The speech was funny. And yeah. God damn it, though, I have never felt more of an old man watching this and loving the duet with my baby tonight. <laughs> it was amazing. Excellent. And a payday for Pat. <laughs> yeah, and a payday for Pat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like there's only a couple of th- staples in wrestling that are like written in stone. Roman Reigns goes on last, you know. The Dudleys do a table spot and get hollered about it immediately. And Jeff Jarrett will never be in WWE again. Yeah. So to see one of those overturned is holy shit amazing. Anything can happen in wrestling. Like literally anything. Mm. <laughs> so move on, move on. <laughs> Speaking of amazing promos, Paige here. <laughs> this meme Jay I didn't get that Can you do it four more times Across two days <laughs> Paige here We get a promo spot With Paige Introducing her new movie Fighting with my family With The Rock Holy shit She looks so bad Here um, Besides her hair being Shaggy And her makeup glomped on She's horse voiced And she looks quite poofy Like I It's actually Gone past trying to, I, I, I really want to badly insult you to, shit, are you okay? Now I just feel sad, let's put on the fucking kettle, like. I actually don't want you to become sunny. Yeah. You know? The WWE's makeup has gotten really bad as well. I was just about to bring that up. Uh, right, she's gone from 80s Courtney Love to 90s Courtney Love. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Paige guest commentated the Women's Battle Royal earlier tonight. On Raw, she'd formally announced her retirement. And on SmackDown, since Daniel Bryan is now an active wrestler, she'll be the GM. But it was very nice. The fans chanted, this is your house, at her. It was a lovely moment. That's a good chant. They were very kind to her. Much kinder than I was. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Holy shit. We just saw Jeff Jarrett back in the WWE and Daniel Bryan is wrestling again. Daniel Bryan is back! His final match was three years ago, tagging with Cena against Cesaro and Kidd on SmackDown, April 16th, 2015. Doctors gave him the all clear, but WWE wouldn't allow him to return. However, about a year ago, he admitted to ESPN he had been suffering seizures and keeping it quiet, and after a new EEG, they found a small lesion on his brain. Since retiring, he's been doing extensive concussion testing and cutting-edge treatment like reoxygenating parts of his brain. Fast forward to 2018. Amazing news. Three different concussion experts all said the same thing. His brain showed no evidence of prior brain injury and cleared him to wrestle. If you're wondering what the big deal about Daniel Bryan is, he's an extremely lovable guy, an incredible wrestler who gives great wonderfully heartfelt promos and he's very honest and candid he get frustrated that WWE wouldn't give him the green light like he'd tell Mick Foley hey what'd you do when you were retired you went to TNA I would rather be in the ring wrestling than being the general manager because 2001 when you quit what did you do you went to TNA and you went to wrestle (laughs) <laughs> it's uh, amazing. So he made it known that when his contract is up in November, he's wrestling outside WWE. Maff, uh, what was the build for this like? Oh, the best thing on SmackDown. The Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn feud, then they turn into friendships because Sami Zayn also hates Shane McMahon. And then we got some drama between Kevin and Sami when it was like, Sami Zayn would lay down a fast lane for Kevin. 
And then Kevin was like, I'm not too sure, to be honest. So he tried to pick up Sammy. So I was like, oh, screw you then, pal. And they started doing Canadian hockey fighting. And it's kind of gone to the wayside. So I'm hoping it continues because it's been gripping drama, to be honest with you. The best bro love falling out since Hannibal season three. And <laughs> uh, yeah, but it didn't matter because suddenly out of friggin' nowhere. Oh, by the way, Daniel Bryan's uh, returning. Excellent. So that's a massive step up in storyline quality over the last two months because at the Rumble, oh, we're at... Oh, yeah, the Rumble, it was just a hurdle they had to get over to get to this match. Absolutely. Incredibly, on Monday, March 19th, WWE's Dr. Maroon, the same Dr. Maroon that's suing CM Punk, <laughs> gave him the all clear. Daniel Bryan can wrestle again in WWE with the caveat of doing concussion testing and evaluation after every match, which is fair enough. Under 24 hours later, the news broke and that night on SmackDown, Daniel Bryan announced his return. Beat down by Cammy, and this tag match is on. It almost wasn't. On TV, March 13th, Kevin Owen powerbombed Commissioner Shane onto stage equipment. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was, it's like some kind of whale orgasm or something. I don't know what Two weeks later, Shane on holiday is rushed to shoot hospital and finds out... <laughs> <laughs> He has <laughs> acute... Because the last place you want to go is the kayfabe hospital. <laughs> Dangerous in there. And finds out he has acute diverticulitis. And then JBL's has, oh, that Brock Lesnar disease. <laughs> and he has an umbilical hernia. So he's out and Brian's in. No, holy shit, Shane McMahon will still do WrestleMania. What a trooper. What a fucking trooper. It's WrestleMania. It's party time. Shane and Daniel Bryan are ready to go. So happy for Daniel Bryan. He's already crying at the ramp. The yes chant just, you know, never meant more. Absolutely never meant more. I was only thinking, like, there are wrestlers who are just as over or just as big or just as popular. But I can't think of a wrestler who's more loved than Daniel Bryan. Like, the fans, shoot, love this guy. <laughs> Not gay <capable. laughs> Do we kayfabe love Reigns, is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl Harbor heals blindside the GMs and Sammy Jawjax with Shane's kids. Awesome. Apron powerbomb to Brian, taking him out. So it's two on one for the next while. Holy shit. Which way did he go? Which way did he <laughs> go? From Shane McMahon, his punches, killing the business. Ghost knee. <laughs> you could drive a bus through the gap between his knee and Kevin Owens. Between this, Shane McMahon's punches, and Brian being immediately sidelined, really took the wind out of the crowd's sails. Absolutely. I thought that this was the point with which the crowd pretty much died. Jeez, I was thinking acute diverticulitis, umbilical hernia, and Shane has to wrestle the bulk of the match. He's getting beat down for the entire match. KO even shouts Shane's theme song, Adam. Money, 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 money. He's not going to save you now. <laughs> money, 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 money. Money ain't going to save you now. More horrific Shane punches to Sammy's kidneys, who's in the tree of woe. He gets up and does a coast to coast. No pop. Mm. Maybe it's because it's so early in the match or no trash can. You know, you know, a match is going well when the man suffering from divert, like, like a Brock Lesnar disease, there's a coast to coast, lands right on his red meat filled intestines and the crowd don't go, oh my God, he's going to die. They go, yay, Daniel Bryan's going to come in now. <laughs> <laughs> Owens frog splash and Bryan makes the save. Huge pop. Hot tag to Bryan and the crowd flip out. Knee to the face, off the apron, missile dropkick, side suplex, side suplex, running backflip dropkicks. Finish of the match, American Dragon with some slappy slaps and yes kicks. Finish with a roundhouse to the head, follow up with a running knee and the Omoplata crossface, aka the yes lock, and Sami Zayn. Yes lock on Sami Zayn! Sami Zayn taps! Taps clean as a whistle in 1525. Yeah, so what do you think of the match? It was a match of two halves. That's uh, very Eamon Dunphy. <laughs> very Terry Henry of you. <laughs> oh, fuck him. We don't, we don't yeah, like him true. in this country, yeah, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, what, what happened? He handled the ball over the line, costing us a place at the World Cup. The fucking pig. <laughs> the fans didn't want to see a tag match. They wanted to see Daniel Bryan. And the WWE kept the fans from seeing what they wanted to see for fucking ages. So the first half of the match didn't enjoy at all. Then, of course, Daniel Bryan tags in. Place goes fucking mental. He was super crazy over. They absolutely loved him. A couple of spots that I didn't like. He did his drop kick off the top rope and then, you know, like landed and sold. Oh shit, the fucking head injury is back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like that. I don't want that to be a thing yeah, going yeah, forward. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And unfortunately, it is going to be a thing because he also did it on SmackDown. And I loved the finishes. The fans went absolutely mental for it. That was awesome. Yeah, if he wanted to do my job for us, it's exactly the same. Yeah, I wanted to see a Daniel Bryan match. Shane McMahon is the polar opposite to Daniel Bryan in terms of, oh, I really want to see that guy and think he's a great wrestler. I'm entertained by him. He may, He's the dirt worst. <laughs> yeah, um, sadly. And his punches, following Ronda Rousey's display earlier, it was just like, oh, come on. So, yeah, Daniel Bryan was very good at what he did because fucking Daniel Bryan. And Shane McMahon was a very bad Shane McMahon. So this match delivered on both ends. <laughs> <laughs> Um, holy shit, overjoyed to see Daniel Bryan properly back in our lives. Apart from the as safe it's ever as it's ever going to be, apron powerbomb. It was very much a safe return match for Daniel Bryan. Thank you. The match was just seeing him do all his old spots again. It was both surreal and wonderful. I never thought I'd see him wrestle in WWE again. Yeah. I thought he was, he'll just kill himself on the indies, you know? Yeah. So magic. I loved it. Thank you. Wonderful. Next up is the Raw Women's Championship match. Alexa Bliss, the champion, versus Nia Jax. Storyline for this match is actually being really, really good. It's been built up a long time. Alexa Bliss was buddies with Nia Jax for months. Uh, she was clearly using her to keep her belt. Mickey and Alexa were talking backstage, and they didn't know that the microphone was turned on. They were saying some terrible things about Nia, and she was in the ring, and she heard it all, flipped her shit, and that was the bill for the match. What did you think of Nia crying in her locker room? I watched it and was confused because whenever there's like a big Braun Strowman or I don't know, Ezekiel Jackson type guy, they always go, yeah, he's so manly. But when a woman's considered by the way, the non-Hollywood beautiful version of what they fucking think is beauty, um, it's presented like this, like, no, you don't understand growing up like that. I think it's, I thought it was weird because I'm not a big woman, but the fact that the crowd reacts so positively to Nia Jax um, means that I'm clearly wrong on this. So, uh, yeah, crowd were going nuts over her because you're now realistic. And you bastards laughing as I'm trying to be fucking serious. I, I am not a big woman. <laughs> That's a fucking There's many, beautiful many beautiful. things I am. <laughs> Um, one day so yeah day. I'm, I'm wrong in this but a lot of people are cheering her going yeah yeah you know you avenge the horrible person and it's like oh great we could all relate to that some way but part of me just just goes like did Vince write this like Alexa Bliss was the good guy and it <laughs> just wrote it and it's oh oh, oh right, right we'll just change that quickly and we had the peak of the storyline where Alexa was doing a promo in the ring and she had been found out by Naya and she just says sorry Sorry, I didn't do it earlier. I just, oh. oh my God. I sincerely apologize. That I didn't speak the truth sooner. Jeff Jarrett somewhere marking out to this. Um, Nia Jax, yeah, very proud of this bullying angle. And Mickey, she is Alexa's hot girl crony. Oh my God. She just needed like an it girl to be around. I love Mickey James, have for a long time. She's so amazing. Alexa's entrance, which was kind of like a take on Sean's at WrestleMania 25 when he fought Taker with the good versus evil. I thought that was awesome. Ferrara Roche, Nia Jax. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pearl Harbor's Mickey and absolutely ragdolls her. Looks awesome. Splat Samoan drop, taking her out. Man, it's like, if Alexa doesn't watch it, it's going to be China Ivory X7 again. I think it should have been. Yeah. Press slam and Alexa awkwardly lands on her feet. She considers running away and gets clotheslined. She's going nowhere. Bliss's only hope is to be sneaky, fast 
and to get to chopping. She does such with a heel thumb to the eye, double knee to the back of Naya's leg and follow up with a twisted bliss. Mocking Naya before a DDT, Bliss says, Sara. Title. <laughs> Jumping Hurricane Rana. Denied. Sunset flip. Denied. Ah, oh, shit. Alexa's wheel barrowed into the turnbuckle. Naya has none of the eye rake and Alabama slams Alexa. Jax picks up the limp body, shouts, I loved you, and hits a Brett's rope follow-away Samoan drop. Easy. One, two, three in 10-15. Uh, what do you think? Matthew, go on ahead there, buddy. I would have just appreciated her taking her down, Warrior Honky Tonk Man style. There was no no need for a competitive match, but she won. The crowd cheered. People were happy. Highlight was Alexa Bliss going, yay, I'm winning. And then Nick Jax went, rah! And she went, ah! <laughs> that was great. And I like that when she was clawing her eyes, it was the same noise that Jax made as when Piper asked Hogan if he was going to wrestle Andre at WrestleMania 3. Yeah! Yeah. Oh, fuck off. I'll go a much bigger pop. <laughs> anyway, V1, save me from this uh, match. Complaining about sandbagging is a way bigger pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought this was probably my second favourite build up to Mania. Wow. Um, the best being? Ronda match. I, I thought that yeah. build was incredible. I think Naya is possibly the worst talker on the whole roster and maybe the worst worker as well. But with the power of this booking, they got her over as a babyface and the fans wanted to see her win, wanted to see her smash bliss and become champion. They nearly got it right. Thought the match would have been way more effective if Nia had a cutter, hit two or three moves of doom, pinned and walk off to the sunset. Excellent. Yeah, uh, an effective storyline match. Babyface Goliath wins. Heel gets her comeuppance. Thumbs up. SmackDown World Championship, Shinsuke Nakamura versus the champion AJ Styles. The Knacker has a rock band. <laughs> Nita Strauss on lead guitar. She is of the Iron Maidens with an S. It's a legally distinct tribute band. She just went mental on the fucking whammy bar. Half of the notes she played were out of tune. And I'm just yeah. like, I, I just thought it was terrible. seeing a guitarist play live at a wrestling show, I just got flashbacks to Shivani and WCW. And it's like, it's the greatest band in the world. Kiss! <laughs> um, it's your granddad's favourite band. Kiss! Yeah. You, you wanted the best. <laughs> you didn't get the best. <laughs> but Steve, what a bear is the big knacker. Well, Jay... Uh, he is in a white umbro top <laughs> and gelled fringe. Gelled fringe. <laughs> Therefore, he is skinny Nakamura. <laughs> uh, well, Nakamura is wearing a lovely WrestleMania red and gold getup. So he is a Lindor Easter egg. Oh. Mm. Delicious, by Topical, the way. Yes. A zombie Linda. <laughs> Um, AJ, he gets mistimed pyro. Bit of a letdown. No, no, that's not fair. Nakamura had the WrestleMania special entrance and AJ Styles had the Pochimania special entrance. <laughs> the Universal <laughs> Champion, AJ. As soon as I went to bed, this happened. Oh. WWE were like, Matthew, are you paying attention? I'm like, no, I'm in bed. It's 4 fucking a.m. Oh, did you know Tanahashi and Okada are in attendance at WrestleMania to see this match? Oh, yeah. Uh, Suzuki, I think he was there as well. Kenzo? <laughs> yes! How did that fucker get in? <laughs> AJ's the champion. The knacker won the rumble. Uh, how's the build been on TV? It's been okay. It was very simple. And then in the last week or two, they upped it a bit. Nakamura's been kind of um being quite cunty, actually, you know, like going up to AJ and he'll tease doing his move and then he'll go up and just pat him on the head 
I think they were lucky that fans were very much looking forward to the actual match rather than using the build to get people into it. But yeah, uh, still one of the better builds. Yeah, there have been some great little bits. Like, he sees AJ Styles backstage, and AJ Styles sees him and goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, you're going to beat me at WrestleMania. And Nakamura goes, oh, you need to have more self-confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's been good. It's like, all right, all right, happy. But yeah, you're right, uh, everyone's right. They have hyped it on the match quality alone, which is a very dangerous thing to do, yeah. because people are going to go, I want to see this match, because they had a great match in New Japan. And then the same people are going to watch it and go, this isn't as good as the match they had in New Japan. Oh, shit. That is not fair. You should not be watching any Wrestle Kingdom before WrestleMania. No, you are setting yourself up to be disappointed. Ding, ding, ding. Relaxation in battle. AJ slaps him in the face. Styles with a surprise running knee to the face. Then they slow it right down, right down like some kind of 30 RPM record. (laughs) (laughs) Headlocks. Wheelbarrow face slam and pump handle gut buster, but Nakamura counters with a landslide Samoan driver. Still in first gear, but Styles kicks the inside of Knacker's knee and follows up with a beautiful roll through calf crusher. AJ dodges, so Shinsuke knees the turnbuckle, and AJ follows up with a phenomenal forearm. What's Shin got? A dick smell triangle. <laughs> Because there's no knee there. He's just literally your face in my crotch. But that may make you tap. And Styles gets worryingly groggy, but he powers out. The match finally heats up. AJ hits a parlay, but Knacker just shakes it off and knees AJ in the back of the head. More knees, insulting slaps there too, and goes for the Kinshasa, countered and rolled up into a Styles clash. One, two, three. Whoa, that's... It AJ retains in 20 minutes 20. Yeah. Matthew, you take it away there. I liked it because of the end of the match afterwards with Nakamura getting his, uh, well, as Jay would put it, the Pearl Harbor in. But I wouldn't say that because it's incredibly offensive. Is and it? Uh, apparently. Still. Maybe. Well, uh, on this podcast, maybe not compared to some of the <laughs> things I've <I'd> said. And... <laughs> We have to lower the bar. <laughs> what bar? <laughs> Jay. Low. low. <laughs> Lowest of the low. Yeah, because I saw this as, oh, this is the first match. So there's no reason to go balls out, balls deep, balls everywhere um, in the <laughs> first match. Deep. Because <laughs> then, uh, I'm thinking, wait a minute, am I getting the right metaphor? Let me just say all of them involving balls. <laughs> um, balls 3D, Mega Drive fighting game. Nice. Um, for the first match of the series, because, yeah, where do you go from after that? So yeah, I'm, I liked it, and I'm looking forward to them having better matches that mean more with evil, sneaky, salt-throwing, <laughs> Mr. Fuji representing Nagamura. Yeah! I, I'd agree. Uh, I was sadly disappointed. The match never went balls to the wall, ultra crazy shit. Oh, balls to the wall, I missed that one, thank you. Oh. Ah. Stayed- <laughs> they were too busy going balls deep, was it? <laughs> Uh, it's stayed in first gear and was over before it got anywhere close to what we know they're capable of. I highly recommend watching their Wrestle Kingdom 10 bout, which is three times better as being conservative. Um, during our three and a quarter. To- <laughs> <laughs> After the match, during the respect spot, Sarah Pussnacker heel turns by low blowing AJ. Told you the Japanese were sneaky. Absolutely. I thought the match was okay. The issue w- was is that we were told since January that this match is going to be incredible. They let us down. I think if they had had a couple of extra minutes because they were just about to get into the WrestleMania portion of the match where they start hitting big moves and yeah, kickouts yeah. and they get the crowd really, really hot. But instead, they just ended it. But may I say, that finishing spot was fucking slick. AJ is Oh my god, he's so good. So yeah, overall disappointed, but I loved the post-match angle. Very reminiscent of Sean and Jericho at WrestleMania 19, where Jericho oh, kicks him in the nice show. Yeah, yeah. Now trust those young lions! <laughs> Jericho kicked Marcos right down on the bell! I'm very, very sorry for what I did to AJ Styles. So he explains his dick-punching actions on SmackDown, saying he was sorry and not speak of that English. That was amazing. <laughs> oh my god, that was amazing. It if, was 10 on 10. If this is the character that we're getting, this was worth it completely. 
Sorry, no speak English. Match number 10 for the Raw Tag Team Championship. It's The Bear, Seamus and Cesaro, the champions, versus Braun and Question Mark. And now it's time for Strowman or McGregor. <laughs> Use a grappling hook to bring down scaffolding on your opponents. Braun. Strowman. Throw an injured man on a stretcher to the floor. Oh, that's tough. Uh, Strowman. Hurl a trolley at a bus and injure three people. <laughs> Has to be Braun Strowman. <laughs> yeah, Strowman, surely. Who else would be stupid enough to do that? Like, Yeah, and, and film it. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel two UFC bouts and get arrested. <laughs> Fucking Strowman. God damn it, Bron. You, you went on a rampage, mate. McGregor, the scumlin from Crumlin. An amazing athlete, an amazing fighter, and a fucking twat. <coughs> Mania time last year, WWE put the brakes on Bron. As soon as Mania ended, they featured him so well, absolutely wrecking the gaff and running raw. Come Mania season again this year, he's back to being in a nothing position. It's very strange, isn't it? So he's an off-season main eventer. Sad face. Is there any storyline to this match? Yeah, the Raw tag team division sucks. <laughs> That's <laughs> Which it? is the storyline uh, backstage and in real life. Aww. As Cesaro and Sheamus go, we're really fucking good. And they beat everybody. He goes, look how good we are. Beat Titus Worldwide five times. <laughs> That's how good we are. Oh, they also lost to them twice. And then pe people like me go, oh, this is setting up the Revival to say that there's good. Nope. Beat the Revival on a nothing Raw with no build. Oh, okay. So then Braun Strowman wins a tag team Raw Rumble by himself because he's Braun Strowman, damn it. This was all great for Braun. It sucked for the other people in the tag division. <laughs> Absolutely. But they weren't here, so fuck them. Mardi Gras champions out first with theatrical royalty characters. Then Braun scares them away, which is hilarious seeing them run away with their massive big paper mache heads. <laughs> Amazing. Superface Braun works the crowd asking, who wants to be my WrestleMania partner? Damn, that's good, Jay. Close up on some filthy guy in the audience. <laughs> Jesus. Dirty Lee. <laughs> Uh, some well-dressed tiny guy with a beer walks around beside him and says, come on, bro, pick me. Oh my God, yeah, pick me, pick me. And then people have to just like, mate, go away. He does, uh, Resting his work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's already chosen, buddy, yeah. Instead, Braun chooses Tanahashi and Okada. Oh, oh my God. God. Nope, a 10-year-old child, Nicholas. Get in there. Oh, yes, sir. So... Nicholas is the tag team partner. He's in this match. Crowd chant, we want Nicholas, which was amazing. Braun obviously does all the heavy lifting, <laughs> including a choke push, lift and slam. Looking at Cesaro, he forearm uppercuts Braun. You know, Strowman's a monster, but Shamo and Cesaro are two tall, burly, meaty dudes. Absolutely. They're not much smaller and there's two of them. So um, dying for this kid to get in and do a spot. After a double crossbody, Strowman inches towards Nicholas, and the crowd pop huge. Strowman, you can't tag the kid in. No way. You're not even kidding me. There are 78 Nicholas now. Nicholas is legal. He's tagged in. He's legal. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> Villainous Cesaro mean faces him. Just. Oh man, this kid uh, looked terrified. It was great. And Nicholas immediately tags back out. Finish of the match, Braun catches Antonio. Big slam. One, two, three. And Strowman and Nicholas are Raw Tag Team Champions. And a production truck already have a graphic handy. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Nicholas, he can barely lift up the title above his head. That was my favourite part of this entire match. Hilarious. Yeah. And absolutely smashed Rene Dupree's youngest champion in WWE record. <laughs> he was 19 and a half at the time. Stephen Flutter, PCW was on Facebook, a poacher of him just grinning next to a miserable looking Renee going, roasting Renee, he's no longer the record holder. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. Excellent. So yeah, uh, what do you think? A very, very mixed. So on one hand... You have your Mark feelings and your Smark feelings? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious and I thought Nicholas was great. And Braun is great. Braun is fucking funny. Like, 
but I worry that he's too funny and they're going to go down the comedy babyface route like really fucking hard. I feel kind of bad for the bar. They've been great for the last year and they got kind of shafted. Death spot number three on this card. But look, it's a bleeding 23 hour show. This is like <laughs> <laughs> this is like hour 22 and we're all knackered and this was a bit of laugh. It's fine. Now let's take the belts off them and let's rebuild. Excellent. Hey, what do you think, Matt? Yeah, I, I agree. For WrestleMania, this was great because you needed that variety. You know, we've had the the ballet. We've had the clowns come out the cut. No, we haven't. We've had the ballet. Ballet is not a fucking circus. Jesus. I hate WrestleMania. (laughs) (laughs) I love the ballet. Please. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. We've had the, the acrobats. We've had the fire breathers. Now let's have some clowns. So it was great for WrestleMania. It sucked for the Raw Tag Division. It sucked for the bar, but yeah, they can blow up the division and start again anew once they've salted the earth. Um, thumbs up. I just thought, listen, these Raw belts mean nothing. The division means nothing. Why not? A bit of crack. I had hoped we'd get some funny segments out of it, but uh, sadly on Raw, they relinquished the tag belts. Nicholas has a scheduling conflict because <laughs> he's in the fourth grade. So that's that. I love that. Uh, who is Nicholas? You might ask. He's actually WWE ref John Cohn's son. Hmm. And uh, he gets the shout out bronze line and we're done. Get these hands! Right, it's 13 matches down. One match left because it's time for your main event. It's your main event. No, we've already had Ronda Rousey tag match. We're on about. That's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's your last match on before they kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what this was. <laughs> it's your main event for the Raw Universal title. It's the champion Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. That Roman, he thinks he's Pope of Chili Town. <laughs> How is his WrestleMania main event coronation going? 2015 WrestleMania 31 main event. It's Reigns versus champion Lesnar, but Seth cashes in and steals the belt. Main event WrestleMania 32. Big dog Reigns Supreme beating Triple H for the world title. WrestleMania 33 main event. Big dog wins the main event again and really not really retires The Undertaker. So now in 2018, WrestleMania 34, we're back in 2015 to see if Roman can get crowned top babyface beating Brock Lesnar tonight. The storyline, Reigns is the loyal workhorse that'll defeat the dirty part-timer Brock Lesnar. I thought the best part of this was Roman got his cowboy hat and Smith and & Wesson out and started shooting on Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, Brock, he's Vince's boy. Yes. <laughs> oh, my Marked God. out to that. Don't answer. I will because there's not going to be because he's Vince's boy. Anything else? Uh, we got stretchers and some handcuffs. Ooh. Go to the gorilla position and confront Vince. I actually like seeing backstage. Uh, I I thought that was kind of cool. And Shane was there as well, which yeah. is very strange. It's very shoot. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, would V1's premonition come true going up to Mania? You were worried that it would be another WrestleMania 20, Brock Goldberg, both of you are booed out of the building. Yeah. yeah. Um, but luckily, <laughs> the show was seven hours long and the crowd were tired. <laughs> So, how did it go? Were they double booed out of the building? Let's find out. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) The end. Roman Reigns theme hit. Boo. I don't know. JJ, we'll do it properly. Boo. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I, I was actually just about to say. Why are we quiet now? I was like, are you going to lower our booze down? You son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Brock gets pyro and Heyman's personal introduction. And we are ready to rock. Incredible sign. I don't even like Times New Roman. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. 
Kick off hot, Lesnar charges Roman back into the corner and straight into Suplex City. Suplex, suplex, suplex. The big dog returns with a big dog <laughs> and a big dog. I can't believe we're back here again after trying this three years ago, WrestleMania 31. It's insane. I may as well have spent the last four years cracking my head off a wall. V1, V1, you've been a coma for three years. <laughs> <laughs> What's the main event of WrestleMania? <laughs> What's changed? <laughs> Fans voice their disapproval with CM Punk chants, which is hilarious because in general, wrestling fans are very salty about CM Punk. Yes, uh, the, fans have definitely kind of turned on Punk over the last couple of years. I don't understand it. Like, guy unhappy at his job leaves. Yeah. So what, what's the problem, you know? Because they're entitled oh, to that. You're abandoning <laughs> us. <laughs> How dare he left to pursue his dreams. Fucking you know, like, cunt. Come on, people. Lesnar mauls Roman and Cole alludes to Brock's destruction of Cena in SummerSlam 2014, which I thought was way too kind. It was great. That was Brock's best match since he's come back. Oh, it was brilliant, way. but this but, was nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Reigns counters and hooshes Brock into the ring post and then sp- big dogs onto the <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd pipe up loudly as they just start to entertain themselves with nice. beach balls. Big dog, big dog. I ran up with another big dog. One, two, no. Massive cheer. And people are looking back at the crowd. Yes, they're doing a wave. Brock counters a spear with an Ed Leslie high knee. Nice. Uh, high knee. F5. No. F5. No. F5. No. And Brock shouts, motherfucker. It was great. <laughs> no. The crowd turn on the match, chanting, boring, bring back Nicholas, and <laughs> you both suck. Oh my god. Um, How have you gotten to the bit where the people backstage in WWE thought that the fans were chanting, this is awesome, and so they <laughs> they hired up the crowd volume, and it turns out they were shouting, this is awful! Oh my god! WrestleMania! <laughs> WrestleMania! <laughs> Fucking dub, dub, love it. E, dub, dub, e. <laughs> This is wrestling. <laughs> well up already on the forehead of Brock Lesnar. The pace has got to be this. Roman Reigns knows this is the first time he's had an opportunity to inflict punishment on Lesnar. F5 onto the table. Boo! Lesnar stands over Roman. Boo! Fifth F5. Boo! Stomach turn, the sickening thud. They mirrored the SummerSlam angle he did with Orton. Right. Brock mounted Roman, hit him with a couple of punches and two or three elbows. That looked really nasty, by the way. And uh, he bled like a stuck pig. Roman slips out of another F5 attempt and counters with a desperation big dog <laughs> and keeps rolling with another big dog. Boo. Kick out. Boo. Roman <laughs> builds up a big head of steam, bouncing off the ropes and boo, boo, into an F6. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, and Lesnar boo. retains. Boo. Yay. <laughs> God damn, the pop after this was bigger than the, the pop brother love got me. Returned on Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah! Brock Lesnar reigns supreme. And you're right, Corey, there with the elbows. Right, the point of the elbow on the face. I love that that hilariously during the replay it has the live audio which contained the this is awful chance. oh yes <laughs> amazing uh, what do you think Matt? holy Christ thank you WWE <laughs> I love you too big fan of your work as well I watch all your videos on YouTube okay <laughs> how do they get everything wrong with this like they've had Roman versus Lesnar and it was kind of working, but then it didn't go with it. And they're going to have it again. And this time it's for real. So at least, ah, oh, Reigns won it. He fucking lost. After all that. After that shit match. After six F5s. And uh, yeah, so they fucking did everything wrong in this match. But 
Nothing could have popped this crowd after seven hours, in fairness. Not a fucking raffle couldn't have fucking crowd <laughs> got this crowd happy. Nothing. It was fucking nothing. So they gave him nothing. They gave him blood and the crowd didn't give a fuck. They booed when Roman rolled Lesnar back in because it wasn't a double count out. <laughs> I mean, just fucking speechless. The fact that Roman Reigns is supposed to be the guy and they still don't know what the fuck to do with him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's something. Let me say, I was shattered by the time that this match came along. I was exhausted and I can only imagine what it was like for the people sitting there. On a plastic seat. On a plastic seat for hours and you know that doesn't count traveling and you know depending on if you go to other shows or not and you know hillbilly jim talking for (laughs) (laughs) this is his fault yeah it's his fault um disappointing there was nothing you could do to make this match great other than keep it short and explosive which they didn't so it was dead before it even had a chance so yeah a very ill-fitting end to wrestlemania yeah, it wasn't good. Luger, Luger, Luger. Oh, nah. Um, I enjoyed the bait. It was actually better than I expected. A uh, very low expected. I was very depressed as a child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they uh, knocked lumps out of each other, but the crowd absolutely turned on it, and I can't blame them. It's insane. It is insane, and a very wet fart of a finish to WrestleMania. And. uh i got to get this in because I wrote it down at work and fuck. Okay. Roman started bleeding and all I could think of is when an airplane knows it's going to crash, it dumps fuel to lessen the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> that analogy is fucking it, awesome. Yes. Uh, Roman's theme plays and we watch his sad walk out of mania. <laughs> Uh, I think the Charlie Brown music. (laughs) 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 What happened? As the story goes, everyone was told Roman was going to win the title, but that's too obvious, though. The plan changed sometime earlier in the week. Even the ref was only told when the match started. It's insane. Reigns went to the arena thinking he was winning, but was told different when he arrived. Anyway, the big scandal was that when Lesnar went through the curtains, himself and Vince had a brief heated argument, throwing the belt against the wall at Vince. That could have been at work. But Vince wanted to fight him, <laughs> which is the most Vince McMahon thing That's ever amazing. Made. I did hear that... Uh... Super Shane yeah. uh, pulled up the Brock as well. Like. He just started, oh, 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 watch these hands. <laughs> you get these hands. See these bunches. See this knee, mate. This will come nowhere near your head. <laughs> but I, I actually, uh, backstage, I know why um, they changed it because the music hit and it was, here comes the Saudi. Saudi talks. Here comes the Saudi. Saudi, 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 Saudi Arabia. <laughs> ching, ching, bling, bling. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so Shane stepped in and Lesnar and Heyman left and they weren't on Raw. Oh, obviously it could be work, but it sounded like Brock worked Vince into a shoot. Awesome. <laughs> and said, I'm going to UFC. And then signed a new short-term deal that day, WrestleMania morning, at a higher rate, which also allows him to fight in UFC. We don't know if he'll actually fight. It won't be for at least six months because he has to put his name into the testing pool. But that's when you know he'll actually fight again. Anyway, Brock, the smartest man in wrestling. Without question. Holy shit, he, he Kevin is, Nash. He, I was, oh, I he's a new Kevin Nash. <laughs> you all bought it. You all bought it. I may even lie on my wife tonight. <laughs> What did you think of the pay-per-view overall? Long as fuck. No show should be seven hours. It's ridiculous. I mean, we have shows over here in the UK which have five matches and people are happy. I guess where they're coming from with WrestleMania is like, oh, casual people, look at the value for money you're getting. A free seven-hour show. Free, free. It's free. It's fucking free. Please (laughs) pay for it. 
<laughs> but audiences' attention span only goes so far, especially now with fucking Twitter and everything else on your phones. And it doesn't matter how many great wrestlers there are. So it depends on how you look at things. If you're a glass half full person, you'll look at the positives, of which there were many. There was Asuka versus Charlotte. There was the mixed tag. Nakamura versus AJ. The hit in the dick. <laughs> the crowd during the main event. Tag Team Champion Nicholas, when you're with me, I feel... And all this, and there were many things there. But God damn it, it was stretch. Like, too little butter stretched you over too much bread. Uh, Steve, what do you think? WrestleMania 34 was great, except for halfway through the show, fell off a cliff. Things I liked about the show, Matt Hardy winning the Battle Royal. Quite sad to see him mixed in there with all the jobbers, but, you know, hopefully yeah. going forward, uh, good things will uh, come. Some of the costumes and entrances were fucking amazing. I loved the opener. I thought the crowd were red hot for about five hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then died a death. Charlotte Oscar was fantastic. Ronda Rousey is a megastar. Daniel Bryan coming back. Incredible. But there were things I despised about the show. Uh, I thought that the tag belts were jobbed out, both of them. I didn't like the taker angle personally. Like, I reckon if I was there, I'd mark out. But the payoff absolutely wasn't worth the time put into the build. Shane wrestling when all we wanted was Daniel Bryan. That killed the crowd, and I don't think they ever really got back after that. AJ Nakamura was good, but it was disappointing. And the main event was so bad that the fans shot on it, which made it kind of entertaining. So, yeah, it was a show of two halves. And Thierry Henry, Thierry Henry, <laughs> Thierry Henry. And I thought Sorry. that the first half was so good that the second half didn't tarnish it that much. So I still enjoyed the show, just wish it was about an hour and a half shorter. Yeah, you definitely got a problem when you need the cardio of Seth Rollins and the ability to take drugs of the 80s roster to watch one pay-per-view. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, agreed with what you said um enjoyable but just way too long seven hours ten minutes it finished at ten past five in the morning it's ridiculous it was actually the same as last year so i learned my lesson so i split this up over two days it was so much better i did four and a half hours live and then i still had two and a half hours for the next day um massive props to Rhonda. she way over delivered h of course for booking it and stephanie mcmahon was brilliant you know, I did have high hopes for this match because Triple H booked Mayweather and Big Show, which was fantastic. And this superseded this. This is actually the best celebrity WWE match in history. Not the best wrestling celebrity match. That goes to David Arquette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boo. Actually, I've seen David Arquette in Bone Tomahawk and all is forgiven. Oh, man. I marked out so hard when he just showed up as the drug there. <laughs> Comes in here, give me a glass of whiskey. No, no, you're too drunk. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> um, Matthew, do you have time for Raw? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Raw theme? Oh. I got my gun, my drink, from my generation. <laughs> <laughs> To the music, play that the fucking music. music. A beaten but disingenuous Steph tries to make amends with Ronda Rousey and gets her injured arm armbarred again. Hopefully that writes her off TV for more than zero weeks. Yeah. Jojo asks, can we please have a little respect for Stephanie? And prompts a <laughs> chorus of booze. Just that was a stroke of genius. Ladies and gentlemen, may we please have a little respect for Stephanie McMahon. Smiley Nia Jax is called a bully by Alexa. Nia tells her to shut up. And we have a tag match with Bliss and Mickey. Nia's partner, NXT call-up Ember Moon, who hits her Eclipse, a top rope jumping stunner for the win. No way Jose comes out with Adam Rose's rosebush. Rose, Buds. Rose, bud. <laughs> rose bush. Rose bush. Rose bush. Rose bush. This isn't Kane where he says rose bush. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, oh, Becky and Braun getting PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> he flattens jobber John Schuyler, who is from Billy Corgan's Resistance Pro in Chicago, in literally two moves. 
Vince hates the word draft, so instead... <sighs> fucking gobshite. <laughs> ...will be a superstar shakeup next week. He also hates the word tournament, so it's a tag team eliminator. The Revival hit the Shatter Machine on Gallo's partner, Anderson, picking up the win. Boys. Broken Matt and repaired Bray, Abigail into Twist of Fate past Titus Worldwide. While we walk, walk with, with Elias. Elias, we're interrupted by V1's boy. Bobby Lashley is back. Oh my god, Bobby Lashley! Yeah, I was very, very happy to see him back. I've been waiting for this for months. He looks great. Man, have him take the belt off Brock. Why not? You've nothing to lose. And he gets a delayed vertical suplex on abs of steel Elias. Holy shit, just like a full minute. Absolutely. Wow! Holy shit, WWE don't give a fuck. KO and Sammy are on Raw looking for a job. Kurt Angle tells him his tag division is full, but he heard TNA is hiring. Marked out to that line. It was hilarious. My tag team division is full, but I hear that TNA is hiring. (laughs) What a double dig there. Not only is it not being called TNA in over a year, but the reason why they're hiring is because WWE keeps on signing all their top guys. (laughs) (laughs) EC3, that's ours. Kurt Angle, that's ours. Bobby Lashley, that's ours. And that's after taking, like, Eric Young and Bobby Roode. And- but Del Rio, you can keep him. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, of course. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was gone a while, mm-hmm. so. I was thinking, man, WWE, so far ahead of your competition, you don't mind name-dropping him. Yeah. But they're actually working on a Hardy's DVD, which will actually have TNA footage on it. Ah. So Kurt makes KO and Sammy fight for a job. Sammy and his awesome goose-stepping... <laughs> In general, he deserves better. Uh, hilariously, neither make it a defeat for a 10 count, so they're both losers. You gotta try again. Slater and Rhino issue an open challenge taken by NXT Collops. End of days! <laughs> the authors of pain with Paul Ellering. Complete squash finishing with a last chapter Russian leg sweep and clothesline combo. Yeah, they look great. Uh, their entrance gear is awesome. On the whole, oh my God. Uh, I, I'm happy to see them. I think they've gotten a lot better as well. So, yeah, happy days. When I got to the Superdome, everything felt off. The way people looked at me, the whispers behind my back. Man Bun Reigns shows up. <laughs> he passes the book saying something was off and Vince wouldn't smarten him up. Were you saying Brock was booked to win? Is that what you're getting? I at? hated this promo. Like it's it, awful. It made yeah. me furious. Like it was quite heelish as well. It was confirmed with a Roman likes impact sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hiring. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that he's going on about special treatment because he is Mister Special Treatment. Absolutely. I couldn't think of a worse way. Anything they could have had Roman Reigns come out and go. You know what? I gave it up my all, but I couldn't get it. I'm really sorry, guys. Double or nothing. Me, you, Saudi Arabia, cage match. I'll leave you for the vultures. Or whatever, something like that. But nothing. He came out and whined. He had a moan. <laughs> Are we supposed to be cheering him? I can't. I, people who watch WWE go, wow, Roman Reigns is turning heel. And you're like, I don't know if he's turning heel or it's just shit writing. I don't think he is. Yeah, shit writing, I think. Yeah, yeah. He gets an automatic rematch whilst Orton, the Usos, and other people have to earn theirs. And then, oh, Joe, 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 Joe. Samoa Joe is back. Joe punks his bitch ass out and says at backlash he'll put Roman to sleep. And and, and then Reigns came out and goes, ha ha, jokes on you. I already put all the fans to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) The Miz gets a massive pop and a round of applause for becoming a father. Then he says when his daughter saw the pain in Miz's eyes and he lost the belt, it made her cry. Seth, brah, you making kids cry, brah? All the pain in your eyes, it made her cry. Miz Daraj won a battle, Rollins and Balor, three on two, but Jeff Hardy returns to even the odds. Oh, backstage Matt congratulates Jeff on overcoming his broken condition. I love this segment. It's like half Jamaican, (laughs) half royalty, I love it. So glad you have overcome your broken condition. 
the six-man tag main events. Jeff lands a whisper in the wind. Balor hits an over-the-top tope, shows off his crazy abs. He's in ridiculous shape. And a crossfit Jesus flattens the Miz with a top rope superplex, rolling into a falcon arrow and finishing with a curb stomp. <laughs> His mates get their shit in post-match and send the crowd home happy. And congrats to Seth, getting a burn it down chant going. Something I never expected to hear. Yes, they've done a really good job of getting him over the last couple of months. Um, Sorry to correct you, V1. The Miz has done a great job of getting Seth Rollins oh, over the last yeah. few months. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, something I expected to be completely sandbagged. It's like the Triple H, Triple H, that chant. Like, no, yeah, no, no one's getting WWE, behind. WWE, 2K exclusive chant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think, Rob? As far as uh, like the Raws after Mania have gone, uh, it's probably the worst one in a while. For people coming back or being called up, it was a great show. In terms of moving angles forward, not great. Roman Reigns. Did you enjoy his match at the Greatest Royal Rumble? Uh, he beat yet. Brock Lesnar for the title. Oh, fuck, right. He lost again to Brock Lesnar for the title. <laughs> it was a match. <laughs> no one can dispute that <laughs> fact. <laughs> Math, what do you think? I like the fact that Roman Reigns came out and said something like, you know what, I also believe that women are worth half the men and all the Saudis were like, boo, you should respect women, <laughs> fucking piece of shit. Get the fuck out. Bro, 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 bro. <laughs> Steve, what about SmackDown? Oh, it Jesus. was a show. It's true. <laughs> the Usos super kick and splashed away to another title opportunity. Fuck fucking sake. kidding me. Come on. Boo. Fucking Samoans. <laughs> Naomi is told her neon gear is seventh grade by Catty Natty Nightheart, who has a newly sewn up crotch. Good stuff. <laughs> she over the split leg moonsaults Natty and hugs her caramel uterus trophy. Jubilant golden peacock Charlotte Flair cuts a babyface promo wondering who's next. NXT call-ups, the Orange Organics. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tell me what, what to do. do. Can't no, you no. see? <laughs> the Aussie girls, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, aka the Iconic Duo, now called the Iconics. They beat up Charlotte and Grave says, the number game. Carmella scrambles to cash in her Money in the Bank briefcase as Mike Chioda, he does this, he takes his fucking time. It's hilarious. And she's oh, like, oh my God, come on. She <laughs> was screeching. I was, oh, the heat, the heat. This is Vicky heat here. Dear God, awful super kick. And Carmella wins and simultaneously disgraces the women's blue belt. So yeah, so the woman who beat Oscar ended the streak. Just there you go. Uh, look, this... Carmella over... transitively broke the streak. <laughs> this uh, puts over um, Peyton and Billy pretty good. So, you know, hopefully they go somewhere out there. Uh, I don't want Carmella to have the belt for long. Ho hopefully she loses very quickly. The main event is a fantasy match. It's a fantasy match. A fancy, fancy, fancy match. Is Daniel Bryan versus WWE champion AJ Styles. Oh, my God. I thought it was a safe map based match. Both men wrestling with honor, taking each other's signature moves. Styles turns over a super back body drop attempt into a splash. Brian selling the back of his head again. Oh, uh, I don't like I, this. No, not a fan. And sneaky shin can chance as Daniel Bryan. So AJ loses by DQ and gives one to AJ for good measure. Hilarious. His, this is his go to heel move the uh, dick punch. <laughs> yes. Major fucking heat. The whoa, 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 whoa. So, yeah, that's it. That's for SmackDown. No Cena, no Taker. What did you think? I didn't think the show was great at all. I was happy to see uh, the Iconics call up. Nakamura's no speak of the English. No speak of the angry. Was fucking amazing line. And the main event, I knew that we weren't going to get a full match with a finish. So I was like, yeah, okay. So yeah, it seems like SmackDown right after Mania ends is kind of gone back into the way it was, which was very much the B show. Which is sad. Hopefully the draft can... Uh, sorry, the superstar shake up. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost shit can there, Steve. <laughs> Hopefully that can, you know, change things up and uh, freshen up both shows. Yeah, absolutely. This was definitely filler to the important thing. This was definitely the Android saga to the Cell saga. <laughs> and I was happy it was over because, Jesus fuck, I've watched a lot of wrestling. 
a lot of wrestling this week. I was in no fucking <laughs> mood for it. It's like, hey, SmackDown with now 33% less stuff happening than Raw. <laughs> wow. Bite sized SmackDown. Fantastic. All right, so that does it for... Oh, no, NXT yeah. or 205 Live or Main Event or oh Super Stars. Great. <laughs> Fuck them. So that closes our odyssey on WrestleMania weekend. Episode 71 is in the books. In the pocket. Out of sight. <laughs> Did you enjoy the show? Uh, which show? This, this show. That just yes, happened. Yes, I, I, I had fun. <laughs> like WrestleMania, it was a long one, but... Uh, I think I was more entertained by shooting shit with you guys than I was watching the second Jeez, that's just fucking hope. Like, <laughs> WrestleMania, you want to die? <laughs> I get people go, I don't watch wrestling, I just watch Botchumania. I'm like, oh shit. And they're like, haha, this guy sucks. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> you only watch my show. Everyone fucking sucks. No looks good. Seems to make a lot of mistakes this show. <laughs> But yes, I always flattered and pleasured and honoured. Your pleasure. Uh, to have me. <laughs> well, you know. Um, luckily, the video is not on the Skype. <laughs> and to be on with you guys, talk about WrestleMania. You guys are funny as fuck. And yeah, and a big shout out to Jay. That's me. For checking with me the time to do this before asking me if I could do it. Oh, yeah. Because he just randomly said, Ah, oh, I'm free next Friday. I'm like, That's fucking great, Jay. You're going to a show or something. <laughs> I want you to know that I've talked to you loudly in my head. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy this I think this went really well as well. Yeah. Oh, Whopper yeah. show. Yeah. Always have yeah. great fucking crack. Math, what is cracking on Botchmania? Oh, fuck all. <laughs> Some people are going to fall over. Scummy's going to do an amusing bit with The Simpsons because it kind of sounds like a bit that happened 30 years ago on an episode of The Simpsons that I have seen at least 300 times so I know it off by heart. And people go, wow, Matthew, you're like Rain Man. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I'm, I should be doing much better things with my life. But thank you very much for keep on watching it and supporting it. I appreciate it. And all to the wrestlers who like me, appreciate Botchumania, and then turn on me when they turn up in Botchumania. <laughs> I love you all, you miserable fuckers. <laughs> Why would you ban your search? I don't understand. We won. What is cracking on Twitch, buddy? Oh my god, it's my game of the year. I've been waiting for fucking years. God of War 4. Drop everything and watch me play this game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and next for OSW, we have our brand spanking new story arc. Holy fuck balls. With a trailer coming soon, sir. So you can watch all of our videos. Fuck. In IMAX flavor at 43 full screen at OSWreview.com. Yes, and if you're feeling jaunty, you can slip us a couple of fucks, squeeze it through the letter hole. <laughs> the letter hole? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, we can watch some exclusive reviews, videos, music, and other great content <laughs> at loggeru.oswreview.com. Oh my god. So it's a goodbye from V1. Take a fucking boo. And Matthew. Bye. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> Titus had a very busy week here in Saudi Arabia. He's had dinner with many princes and very important people. And he oh. just... <laughs> oh, my God. What the heck? Did... What did Titus just... I can't believe what I just saw. Did that really happen? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did that happen? Yes, it did.